The People's Democratic Party has commenced the screening of aspirants vying for the party's presidential ticket. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the federal government has declared Monday, May 2nd and Tuesday, May 3rd as public holidays to mark the Workers' Day and Eid al-Fitr celebrations, respectively. The Minister of Interior, Raouf Aragbashola, announced this in a statement released by the Ministry's Permanent Secretary, Shwai Belgore, on Thursday evening. The Minister commended workers in the country for their hard work, diligence and sacrifice, noting that their efforts were largely responsible for the greatness of the country and the respect Nigeria now commands worldwide. Arag Shola also congratulated all Muslims on the successful completion of the holy month of Ramadan, while urging them to imbibe and practice the virtues of kindness, love, tolerance, peace, self-denial, sacrifice, and good neighborliness, as exemplified by the Holy Prophet Muhammad. At number nine, the River State Police Command has arrested a People's Democratic Party governorship aspirant in the state, Farah Dagogo. The arrest of the federal lawmaker representing Degema and Boni federal constituency of River State was executed on Thursday on the orders of the state governor, Nyeso Mike. According to Dagogo's spokesperson, Ibrahim Lawal, he was arrested while appearing for the screening of the governorship aspirants of the People's Democratic Party in Port Harcourt. Lawal disclosed this in a post on Facebook on Thursday. Earlier, Governor Wike had declared the lawmaker wanted for allegedly hiring thugs to attack the PDP secretariat in Port Harcourt. But Dagogo had denied the allegation, instead accused the governor of trying to prevent him from appearing before the party's screening panel. At number 8, the governor of Ogun State, Dakpo Abiodun, has declared his intention to contest for a second term under the All Progressives Congress. Abiodun made the declaration on Thursday at the Executive Council Chambers of his office at Okemosan, Abiokuta, when he received the nomination form bought for him by a group, the Dakpo Abiodun Mandate 2023. The governor also immediately announced the renomination of his deputy, Noimot Salako Yedele, as his running mate. Abiodo expressed surprise at the group's effort to purchase the nomination form for him while recounting the many trials he and his team had passed through in the quest to lead the state. At number seven, Vice President Tiemi Osibanjo visited Edo and Delta states on Thursday in continuation of his consultation across the country over his presidential bid. Osibanjo visited the palaces of the Oba of Benin, Oba II, and the Asaba of Delta, Obi Edozien. While in Edo and Delta states, the Vice President held a meeting with stakeholders of the All Progressives Congress. At number six, the Minister of Transportation and Presidential Aspirant, Rotimi Amechi, met with the leadership of the ruling All Progressives Congress in Lagos State on Thursday to seek its support. Amechi said he was in Lagos to seek support, though he knew that the state is the base of APC national leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is also eyeing the presidential seat. Speaking, the APC chairman in the state, Cornelius Ojelabi, appealed to APC aspirants to tread softly and work together to save the party from collapse. He urged the foundation members to assemble themselves and assess the critical situation that the APC had found itself. At number five, dozens of people have been injured in fresh clashes between Palestinians and Israeli security forces on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem's old city, referred to by Muslims as the Noble Sanctuary. Palestinian news agency reports that the violence on the last Friday of the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan left about 42 people wounded. The report said there had been repeated confrontations on the Temple Mount in the past two weeks, while the security situation across Israel remained tense after a wave of attacks. According to the police, hundreds of people, some of them masked, had provoked unrest at the holy site. The police said stones and fireworks had been thrown in the direction of the Western Wall a place where Jews gather to pray, after which they entered the area to kill the disturbance. At number four, the United States has confirmed the first known human case of H5 bed flu in a person in the western state of Colorado. The U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention said in a statement that the person who tested positive for avian influenza A virus was involved in the culling of poultry presumed to have had H5N1 bed flu. The patient reported fatigue for a few days as the only symptom and had since recovered. According to the CDC, the patient is being isolated and treated with an influenza antiviral drug. 
At number three, Russian forces have arrested two British men working as aid volunteers in Ukraine. Russia claims the two men, Paul Ure and Dylan Healy, have links with a non-profit organization called Spies. The family of one of them disclosed this on Friday. The pair were said to be operating independently to try to get vulnerable Ukrainians out and were arrested as they drove to help a woman and her two children in Zaporizhia. At number two, the federal government has said that the country is safe to host the first global conference on cultural tourism and creative industry scheduled for November 14th to November 17th in Lagos State. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said this when he featured on a phone-in program of the Radio Nigeria in Abuja. Nigeria was given the hosting right for the maiden global event by the United Nations World Tourism Organization at a meeting held at the organization's headquarters in Spain on April 19, 2022. Mohammed said that insecurity is a global challenge and countries with worse situations than Nigeria were developing their tourism potential. Finally, at number one, the People's Democratic Party has commenced the screening of aspirants vying for the party's presidential ticket. The aspirants were screened at the Legacy House in Maitama, Abuja. The screening began at about 11 a.m. on Friday, and aspirants including former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, former Senate President Bukola Saraki, and former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Pius Ayim, were at the venue for the exercise. Others screened include River State Governor Nyesom Wike, former Anambra Governor Peter Obi, former Ekiti Governor Ayo Fayoshe, Akwaibom State Governor Udom Emmanuel, as well as a United States-based medical doctor, Mwachiku Anakwente. However, as of the time this report was filed, none of the screened aspirants spoke with journalists or disclosed the outcome of the exercise as it affects their candidacy. That's all for today, but before I go, I would like to remind you that the 2023 general elections is drawing closer. Do not fail to get your permanent voters card. See you next time on What's Happening.